We're live. We are We're live. live. Don't say fuck or bugger. Don't say fuck or bugger. I think you said that last time, uh, the first time we came on. Probably. Yeah. You, yeah. You were the first co-host as well. Uh, you were the first temporary co-host. Remember when Jared had a day off? And you came and jumped oh, in. Oh, yeah, and Jared, yeah. I can't remember who we... Oh, it was John Bream. John Bream. <laughs> Fucking John Bream. Yeah, mad as a fish. That was episode eight or something like that. And this is episode yeah. 188. Because I was three, when I? You were three. I think Bream was... Yeah, I think Bream was episode eight. Mm. And yeah, this is now episode 188. And, uh, and, oh man, so episode eight would have been somewhere in the region of Q4 2018. Q3, Q4. Mm. Q3, so it's, yeah. In the before time. Is it, wait, what has been going on? Since then, yeah. What has been going on since 2018? <laughs> like a different world. Yeah, it is, isn't it? How's it been for you? Roller coaster. It's been good, it's been good. Um, yeah, it's been fine, to be honest. And in, in the grand scheme of things, compared to what other other people mm. have to deal with, you know. So yeah. Generally, it's all right, yeah. How was, uh, from where you were on the border, where you live on the border, mm. did you see much difference? Was it obvious the difference, or was there an obvious difference between the way Wales were dealing with stuff and the way oh, yeah, yeah, England yeah. were dealing with yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. It Go was a then. massive pain in the ass, because there's some rules that were in place in Wales and different rules in England, and when you're on the border, you're often going across the border to do different things. So Wales, you couldn't leave within like a mile of your house, but the, Eng the English border was in a mile of your house, so therefore you could go, you could leave and then go as far as you want when you hit the English border. And then it started, you started to not have to wear masks in England, but you still had to in Wales, and it was, and it was changing all the time. That, that mask thing, they, I think Wales didn't turn off that mask thing for about, until about three months before months after Wales, after England. After didn't England, they? yeah. Oh, a good while after. Quite and Scotland while, were yeah. later than Wales again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I just think with the whole devolved government thing, it was like, well, we, we're going to do things just a little bit different to what you were going to do things, and we're going to, everyone wanted to do their own thing. And it just made things confusing. Well, Drakeford's not popular, is he? From what well, I yeah, they vote him in every single time, so he obviously is popular. Eh? popular. Why do you think that is, though? Because, um, I don't know, I just think. Um, the Welsh just give Labour a free ride every time. It's just, it's even Plaid Cymru don't It's that legacy mine strike, yeah, I think Scargill, so. Thatcher thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I Probably. think so. I think so. Yeah. Not wanting to get too much into politics, but it still unsettles me when you go in to vote anywhere in Wales and you have that little hammer and sickle. There's always a communist, Welsh communist party. No. Yes. Yeah. No. You will see a hammer and sickle on the voting paper. when you go No. To, yes. hundred percent. I did not know that. Yeah, you do. It's like a bit unsettling well, I'm sometimes. I'm Welsh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever mm. voted in Wales when I, was, when I grew up there. Like, or uh, any time I ever voted mm. me in England, I think. I didn't start voting until I was quite... Uh, well, a lot of, I've, only, I've only voted a couple of times. only voted a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Um, what were we talking about off air that I said we wanted to talk about? Oh, <clears throat> the most offensive thing that anyone's ever said to you. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Spin that story, because that made me laugh. Yeah, well, no. Because most people... It was people the most intended offensive thing <clears throat> that, that anyone said to me. Yeah, that stung you. That really hurt. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Go on, then. I had the intention to. It Go was... Um, Keep talking. I'm just going to move this camera. Right. Yeah, okay. It was... Um, it was Dave Benny when we were on the piss. Dave Benfell. Dave One Benfell, yeah. handsome men ever to walk... Good-looking bugger. Yeah, yeah. Isn't he? Yeah. What are you doing? You're sniffing me. Right, we need to be more. We need to be more coordinate. Not coordinate. We need to be more. We need to be more um, aware of the substance of quality of this conversation. I'm mm. not going off track and doing the hue and fucking stew conversation show because it's going to be a while. <laughs> right, <laughs> the icebreaker. The icebreaker is a bit of a wild uh, car crash. But anyway, so okay. spin this story. I blame the format. Go on. No, go on. You talk, tell the story. Oh yeah, yeah. We were on a piss night beef. Right? These me, first few it, minutes of this podcast are critical, mate. It was you me. You don't want people switching off because you're talking shit. You've got to front load it. Well, you've got to edit it after, haven't you? I don't do anything. With explosions don't and special effects and Tell shit. Tell the story. The thing that's ever anyway. stung you most. Uh, well, no, it was, it was the most intended to sting me. Because we we were... It was I'm me. Sting. It was me, Dave Benny, you and Sterling. And what's that drop lad's name? It doesn't matter. Go on. Oh, anyway, story. anyway. Back we're on the lash. We're on the piss, and it was like fourth day into it, and we were on the lash constantly, and I was absolutely chinned, and I couldn't stay out all night, and I ended up flaking and piling in and going back to and the room early. And you left Dave out on the piss on and his I own. I left Dave out on the piss on his own, and he'd come back, and he was so angry. 
and he, he first he tried to piss on me, but he couldn't. And then he and then he got down and he was trying to he tried to think of the most insulting thing he could say to me, and he said, "Nothing you do will ever be Ali again." <laughs> <laughs> He just tried to be like the most insulting you could be to a reg bloke because like he was genuinely hurt that I'd left him out on the lash. Um, yeah, but uh, that would sting. Yeah, if but if it was meant, it's but fine. it was. I don't think it was meant. Next morning we were all kisses and hugs again. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's just funny because that was that was where his mind went to try and be the most insulting. Like he could have called me a hat or something, but he went with what he thought was worse. Mm. <laughs> like nothing you ever do will ever be Ali. Mm. Bless him. What do you think yeah. about the world right now? What, what, what do you th like? Are you worried mm. about the state of the world right now? So you've got, see, we've got America is a bit bonkers <sighs> at the moment, more bonkers. We've got we we are bonkers at the moment, definitely mm. politically, not necessarily as, as no, like society. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if we are that bonkers. Well, we, we, we're 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 not we're oh. not stable. When no. I say bonkers, I mean we're not stable. Well, the Tories are a bit bonkers at the moment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, and then we've got the Ukraine-Russia situation going on. Yeah, we've got, yeah. Uh, we've sure. got the whole uh, corruption going on between all over the world, which is all sort of fallen out from the FTX, Sam Bankman Freed thing. We've got uh, China being... Oh, man, have you seen the videos coming out of China of... So they're, oh, so they're it, protesting yeah, yeah. now. So there's, there's mm. protests going on a lot across China. Are you aware of the protests going on at the Apple factory? No, no. Oh, my, well, for, well, here we go. So the Foxconn factory, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Apple manufacturing factories of apples in China, right? Apples. Of, of they've managed... Apple product or uh, you apples. Know what I, you know what I mean. No, I don't. Apple iPhones. Oh, okay. Apple phones. Yeah. Well, I don't know. They don't manufacture <laughs> apples. <laughs> Well, they've got to get their apples from somewhere, Any, haven't they? Anyway, so trees, right? So, um, yeah, at, still the, farm shut up, at the, uh, well, at the uh, Apple factory, <laughs> protests going on. <laughs> the, uh, the iPhone factory, the iPhone factory, Apple factory. <laughs> Look at you laughing, for oh. God's sake. Right, at the iPhone factory, mass protests going on. <laughs> yeah, there. And they refu now, at this factory, Stu, mm. because of COVID, yeah. the, the party... Have basically, as in the Chinese Communist Party, have basically yeah. said, or the People's Party, Apple, they've Apple said party. that they have to keep working mm. and they have to live on site because of COVID. Yeah. So they live on site mm. there, working crazy hours, yeah. subjected to horrendous working conditions. They started protesting mm. and refusing to, yeah. refusing to build the phones, like to the point where it's now, it, it, this it's hit some news outlets last week. The ones that wanted to sort of do a story about it, mm. but why isn't like it's delayed? The, it's delaying the release of the new iPhone. This is how bad it is. Mm. Mm. Why is? Why don't you know about that? Is my question. Yeah. We were talking about yeah, news yeah. before this. Yeah, like, yeah, why yeah. is no one running that story? Big. Yeah. You know, Apple. How big are Apple? How many people rely mm. on Apple for things? How much money do they generate? How much power have they got? Yet no one yeah. is deciding to go. Oh, protests and re refusals to work at their big factory, which is delaying the. Delaying the roll of, of the next iPhone. Yeah, even yeah. just, yeah, yeah. Like, ignore the China and protest bit, even just a delay of Apple's next iPhone, that would normally yes. be we'll news. news. Yeah, it yeah, would yeah. normally be news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, mm. delays in the production, da, 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 and they'd, they'd love to throw it yeah, up there yeah. and, and just hurl, hurl abuse. And then, why aren't they, sh why aren't, why isn't that news? I don't know. We why always give them a free ride. You could, you could argue all about the COVID stuff as well. And whether or not you think that COVID was made in China or, or whatever it certainly came from there it does even skeptics say that it came from from there originally even if you believe the bat stuff but you know that's another tangent isn't it well, what, what, but, uh, why, why is that interesting to you well it's just uh, we always sort of give them a free ride because they because we economically so dependent on them so we overlook a lot of things like the, the human rights abuses and all, all the stuff and the really shady shit with um, the Uyghur Muslims and stuff. You know, their re-education camps are horrendous. <laughs> I don't know how much about and it. We, know, exist, we won't know about it, mate. And, and it goes back to what you're saying, you know. It's uh, it's just brushed under the carpet, isn't it? Well, how, do they re how do their re-education camps work, do you know? Well, like, after the after the Second World War, their re-education -edu camps were just, just, like, torture farms, essentially. Um there's a really good podcast about it by a guy called Daryl Cooper. 
called um, Martyr Made Podcast. And he does, he's a bit like uh, Dan it's Carter. Called what Mar- Martyr Made. Martyr, Martyr Made. Martyr Made, yeah. Okay. And he know. does, he's a bit like Dan Carlin. You know Dan Carlin? Yeah. He does a ta- the history one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he does, he's done an episode about the re education camps in uh, Eastern Europe following uh, communist occupation after World War Two, And yeah, it's just. Oh, it just uh, he goes really dark places with it, and it's it's just sickening. And so what, he's, he's, what are the ones in China doing now? Then how do they probably work? something similar? Well, we don't know. Well, you have to explain no, what the other ones did. No, the other ones. It's just um, oh, it's, it's, it's load, there's loads of stuff they do, but they just basically torture them on mass. It's just physically beat them all day, every day, deprive them sleep. You know, make them eat their own feces and stuff, and take part in weird sort of. Orgies and just because they because they are not expressing it. views that align yeah, with the party. Yeah, so basically they break them down to such a point where they can't think for themselves. Um, yeah, like with the Nazis, they had the enemies. Like you knew if you were Untermenschen or whatever, then you'd be on the wrong side of Nazi. You know, you kind of knew where you stood with the Nazis, depending on who you were. As in the Nazi party. Yeah. In, as in the yeah Nazi Germany by and large. Or whatever, yeah. Um, whereas with the communists, it was anyone could be a victim of, you know, any ideology that wasn't communism got the full, the full treatment, essentially. And I, I know China isn't at that level because they've had to adapt. It's a very bastardized version of communism, isn't it? Because I mean, a true communist wouldn't even engage with the free market, would they? They wouldn't. Yeah, they eschew all the capitalism. It's kind of something else. There's isn't a it? different yeah. term for it. They call it yeah. something. Like, no, it's not capitalist communism. It's called no, but that is kind of what it is. Isn't it? it is basically yeah, what it is. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it's something. It's something else. I can't remember mm. what the term for it is. Yeah, but it's you're right. It's, it's communism with this a smart bit of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like the the capitalist. Side. I say a smart bit. It's smart, but for them to generate money, but it doesn't mean that. Uh, it's yeah, it's terrible. still yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's it's scary, isn't it? But then that and that doesn't make the news, like you said. But then you've got the whole, you know, hullabaloo with the woman that was made a racist remark by asking uh, where her heritage was. I don't God. know, but it's like a storm in oh, a teacup, isn't it? And God, you're like, mate. there's there's other stuff in the world, that's, you know. You're talking here about I can't remember her name, but you're talking here about a a a, pre, a, a, a palace aide. Yeah, the Queen's who, consort. Or something, Eighty-three years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. Queen's consort. There was a charity reception at the palace, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, and it was uh, a, well, the lady was a human rights, a domestic abuse campaigner, wasn't she? La- yeah, the lady, the engaging conversation, lady there, who was a black, a black lady, and this woman, the 83-year-old, who's, been, who's worked for the Queen for 60 years, I think, or worked yeah. for the Queen before mm. the Queen died for 60 years, uh, like uh, mega lady, by all accounts, asked, asked the uh, human rights campaigner where she's from, and then the human rights campaigner says, I'm assuming she said probably something like, probably like London. England yeah, or London yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the and then the palace aid I say palace aid, whatever her role was, sorry, I don't mm. I, I can't remember what it is, but the eighty three year old lady mm. who was white said, No no, where are you really from? Yeah. What she asked. And then so, I don't know how it came about. I think it was a p- complaint put in by the by the human rights campaigner lady. Yeah. Complaint put in. The palace have had an immediate reaction, sacked this lady yeah. by the sounds of it. And then, and, and also send in the papers. What the fuck? Yeah, like, <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? I'm sure she said the wrong thing, but it's a slip of the tongue. Like, if she'd have said, where are your ancestors from? Yeah, it's, it's, that would have been fine. It's not a slip of the tongue if she just worded it wrong. If yeah, she's that's saying, it, yeah. like, because it she is. worded it, it wrong. Is yeah. it like, I, because I've asked this question to people who, who are not white. Right? I say, but I don't ask it like that. I say, um, what's your family heritage? That's exactly yeah, yeah. verbatim what I say. Yeah. I say, because it's, and I've had to think about how to ask it properly. Because I'm just interested. Mm. It's not because I want to know, because, oh, I can discriminate against you if I yeah, know you're from, yeah. I don't know, whatever whatever place mm. that has a, like, a predominantly people who aren't oh, white. I'm just interested mm. in it, because I like, like you, mate, I like learning about me. I like, I love, do you know what I love? Meeting people who've got a different background to myself. I fucking mm. love it. And Why am I here then? And, pardon? Why am I here then? I don't know. You're an easy target. No. Yeah. Um, so that's that's how I ask it. Like, yeah. what's your family heritage? And mm. I, 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 and at the moment, I don't see, I don't see how that can be offensive. And that's probably what this 83 year old meant. No, yeah, but she's 83. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> no, what I mean? Yeah, Fucking yeah. 83. Like. Yeah. And uh, 
And, and that's yeah, getting all the prime time on the news at the moment. Uh, what that was and it? the football, obviously. What was it? What was it? Was also said. Oh, it said it's this the the human rights campaign. A lady said it's an example of institutional racism within within the monarch and in England. I think she said something like that. Mm, and yeah. I was thinking about this yesterday, like last night. Mm. No, it isn't. No, it's right. Not. That is at the very worst. That is an that is if if institutional racism has existed there. Oh, it has existed the year in the past, right? Mm. In in UK in the past, yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. has. Yeah. Um, that so that that because it's an eighty-three year old person, not that she was demonstrating racism, I don't think, right? But at the very worst, it is an example of a legacy remnant of what was once institutional racism, like years ago, and how what was acceptable to say and how to talk. That is at the very worst. Mm. What I would say is an example of existing now institutional racism is if one of Prince William's kids said it like that. Like the young, like someone young said it. Yeah. So it was acceptable mm. to say it, speak like that. And I go, whoa, if a child is, or, like, or youth thinks that right to say, is the right to say, then that means the people above them are reinforcing that behavior or teaching that behavior or saying that's all right. And, they, and then you think, well, that means it's not insignificant. But it mm. wasn't. It's an 83-year-old woman. Yeah. 83. Mm. You know what I mean? She was nearly born in the fucking uh, 19th century. So yeah. 83, <laughs> which, well, 1920. She was born in the 1920s. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They weren't cars. Was they 19 cars? Oh, yes, they were. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah, they were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were cars. They yeah. weren't mobile yeah. phones. People yeah. were still cutting about on horses. Yeah, it was before the iPhone 1. It, crazy. The, people were fighting trench warfare. Mental. Mm-hmm. Mental. Still are you? Yeah. yeah. But you, you see my point. Yeah, no, no, I know, yeah. The changes that woman must have seen What's in her life. What's pissed me off? What's pissed been, me uh, off insane. is the palace's knee jerk reaction to it. Yeah, I know. It's fucking Just throwing shocking. her under the bus. How like about, a long term employee. How about yeah, throwing them under the exactly. bus because it's. No. The mitigating mm. circumstance to that is maybe, maybe the 83 year old lady is not a nice person and is actually racist as fuck. I I sincerely doubt that. Hmm. That's the only we valid You're reason. You're playing I, devil's advocate. I am. Though, That's insane. the only valid reason I can see for the palace mm. to go, yeah, right, let's give it to her because she's a liability. But I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. Yeah, I don't think so. I think, that, I think you've got the whole Harry Meghan thing looming over it and it's a knee jerk reaction to try and make themselves appear. Yeah, and I think also that the monarch are worried about their reputation and, and, and surviving yeah. for another generation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, they just difficult. don't need this heat. And they've also, you've got. You've got the Harry and Meghan documentary coming out soon, <laughs> haven't you? Um, what, do you mm, <laughs> what do you think? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. What do you think? I, I, I don't like her. I think she's vile. What about what about Harry? I, I think he's a bit of a sellout. You're a bit of a what? Sellout. Sellout. Yeah, that's what I think. Go on. <laughs> Just, I don't know. I don't. I don't like. I don't know. I think she is. She does play the race card a bit with that. But, uh, and and he's just backs her blindly and doesn't. Uh, I don't know. From what from I don't know from where I see it, it doesn't. They they were doing all of this when the queen was really old. You know she didn't need that sort of stress. She had enough with bloody Andrew doing his shenanigans. Um, she didn't need it off them as well. Splitting and going over there and doing all them stories. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't like her. She's not. You know, it's not a racial thing, and it's not an American thing. You know, I thought she would be well positioned. Oh, she's uh, Canadian. To she's be Canadian. A, she's Canadian. Is she? I'm pretty sure she's Canadian. Yeah. But like, I, I, I would have thought she'd be pretty well positioned to deal with royal life because being famous and everything, and having, you know, having press attention around you and all the time, all that sort of pressure, and you think that she'd be used to that and and she'd be able to take it, but. No, I don't. No, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't. I think you can I only. Like I think you can only be used to that if you grew up in it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and, 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 and even know. then, and even then, it's not. You, 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 Zealous, you can't be because look at Harry. Yeah, but Williams, coping all right. Just yeah, but they're, they're different people. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, the point I'm making is it's such. It's so different. I mean, yeah, but yeah, but then you're saying that anyone who marries into the royal family is going to have that same reaction, but they don't. So no, I didn't say. Do no, I didn't say that. That's what I heard. Okay. It's so different, right? Yeah, you're in the public eye. That's what I think. Oh, so different to... Yeah, so okay, different. yeah. You're yeah, in yeah. the public mm. eye. You are, in inverted commas, celeb, 
mm. A-list, uh, it depends on where you are in the world family, yeah, right? Yeah. You're in there, but that's only part of it. Like, take away, take away the public eye thing. Let's pretend no one knows that family, right? Mm. And you go into that family. Even then, it's a culture shock. Look at the family you're walking into. Look at what it's like. As yeah, in, yeah. They're just so different to any, anything. Mm. There's very few families in the world or in the UK or in England that are like them in terms of, I'd say that in terms of, you know, traditions and culture internally and the way mm. there is the kids and the way and the interpersonal mm. relationships yeah, up yeah, and down yeah. the tree, mm. left and right between siblings, yeah. the way they, you know, the, the formalities and stuff and the way they, like, almost everything's fucking formal. Almost yeah, everything's yeah. formal. The luxuries are provided, the luxuries that aren't afforded. Yeah, like yeah. they are things we don't have. They have opportunity. Mm. They, we have opportunities to do stuff. They don't have opportunities to th- stuff. Yeah, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah. People, think, t- t- people t- think they've got everything. Like, yeah. no, they haven't. There's literally stuff they can't do, but we can yeah yeah you know what I mean yeah, we can yeah. go for a walk in Richmond like mm. you and I can go for a walk in, and I'm not defending them here I'm just making the point that it's no, I know. so I know. fucking different you and I, I can I go think, for a walk think, in Richmond um, Park mate hand yeah. in hand if you wanted no one mm. would bat an eyelid mm. there may be there may not be like like, do, oh, yeah. little large. it's a little fat man little mm. and large yeah but they couldn't do that literally can't no, no, do it no 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 never get alone time mm. unless they're in the room yeah that's you why you know what I mean yeah that's why I thought like when it's during an interview or something Harry said that the most normally felt was when he was on tour in Afghan. That's the most normal he felt. Mm. Yep. You know. So yeah, if that's the most normal you feel is when you're on operational tour in Afghan, it's 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 a different way of life, isn't it? But um I just still don't like I still don't like the way they conducted themselves, Harry. Yeah. Now. I initially thought I thought I could like Harry, right? I like I liked Harry. Oh, well, mind you, I, I briefed him, didn't I? And he fell asleep in my oh, that's lesson. Right, yeah. Oh, I'll tell that story. Tell that story. Tell that story. I forgot. Well, about I, that. I briefed him and he fell asleep in my lesson. And normally I'd sort of... Was that a him problem or a you problem? It's him, mate, shut up. <laughs> no one else fell asleep, just him. He was getting his head right down. But then I think, I think also when he gets somewhere, he gets whisked off to the mess and everybody wants their bit with him, don't they, all the officers. So he probably had a long night anyway, do you know what I mean? I'm not making excuses for him. Fuck, I shouldn't have fell asleep. In proof. Yeah, J2 mm. brief, yeah. Well, what I thought was when the whole, when the whole situation started off, mm. like with him and Megan and things were like started going a bit, hmm... Yeah. This isn't good. When he when he when he started expressing discontent, he refused to do media at one point, didn't he? Yeah, Remember? yeah. When it was still yeah. in with the family and all that. Yeah. And what I was thinking was, again, I I I'm, I'm ever the optimist. I always want to see the good side. I never want to see the bad side of people. I I don't. Mm. I refuse to believe it exists until I uh, mm. slap him a fi- smack in my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and also want to play devil's advocate because yeah, a lot too. of time because I always worried mm. about missing the minority point of view. Mm. You know, uh, the, the, yeah, the, 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 the least likely point of view and then just getting it completely wrong, right? And so with Harry, what I thought was, initially, I thought, okay, he's got real world experience. He's got experience that will change your perspective on stuff. Most people's perspective on life, what, what is valuable, what is not. And I mean, like the um, his military stuff he did, he did significant things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the charity stuff he did, yeah. Yeah, and um, and yeah, you look at that. Victor's games look at the, the stuff he did. Mm. He is at heart, I I think, a fucking good guy. Yeah, like you, I don't think you can deny it. A fucking good guy, good right? Good guy, yeah. So what I initially thought was, okay, he's had a real life in here. He's met, he's met the woman of his dreams. I think he's met the woman of his dreams. Mm. May have, may not, may not, may work out, may not. And uh, and now he's going. Hmm, I am not happy with this life. I'm not, he's got thinking about his mother. I'm not happy with his life. I don't want. I want to live a life uh, for myself. I want to. I want to live a life of value as much as I can within the within the confines of what my circumstance provides me. The, who I happen to be, how I happen to have grown up, how people perceive me, blah 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 blah. And so he's gone. Fuck it. I don't want any of it. Leave me alone. I don't want any mm. of it. And then left and gone away. Right, as in, got the kind of get me the fuck out of the family, leave me alone. I'll I'll just live my own life, please. Thank you as much as I can. Right, but now, well, this example of the, the documentary coming out, they the, got the the she's got the podcast and she he hasn't. She's got the podcast. It does seem very one sided. That seems to be she makes all uh, decisions. Well, and this, yeah, he this is the thing. That just I, 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 I'm, I think. Yeah, I think um, he's lost his I, balls. Yeah. I th- I, I think the situation's running away with him mm. and, uh, and he's not in control. That's best case scenario now. Worst case scenario is he's exploiting stuff and he's he's just trying to milk it, which I don't think, I just can't. I think it's probably her. Yeah, it's, all, but so. then it's always easy to blame the woman as well, though. Like, it is always easy to blame the woman. Well, it, or, man, or, blame, or blame the person that's not in no, the family. No, well, as a man, it's always easy to blame the woman because the man doesn't want to believe that the man they're talking about is fucked up. 
I, I don't know. Not I really. Think so. Not really. Right. I look at Prince Andrew, and he's he's an absolute fuck up. I won't blame anyone else around him, but yeah. him getting him, himself into that situation. Like, this. Take those two, Pr- Prince Andrew and Prince Harry. Prince Andrew's the biggest fuck up there, I think. Didn't it? That interview he did was an absolute car crash. I watched bits. Worse of it. than the icebreaker just gone, <laughs> wasn't it? I watched bits of it. Yeah, it's horrendous. It's just so obviously think, lying about you, everything he says. How you do you think? think uh, so, how do you think that should have been handled by the royal family? I just don't think it went through anyone. I, and should it? Like the truth, it seemed like the truth came out and it was exposed. So maybe that was the good thing. I, I don't know. They didn't want to touch him because obviously things were done wrong. There's, there's a, there's a massive slippery slope because you've got with the whole Epstein thing. It, it goes deep, doesn't it? <laughs> you know it does. Yeah, but let's just keep it on Andrew. And that's so, it. do you think they handle it the right way? The family handle it the right way. Well, they, well, ju- the they queen. just didn't did you, handle it. The queen, they just didn't handle. I mean, they handled. They did the right thing after because they just got him out of the public eye and got rid of him. Um, personally, I'd have liked to have seen them do an exchange, exchange Prince Andrew for that woman that hit Harry Dunn on on the car, like a prisoner exchange. Oh, she'll come here. Her. She'll come here and face I justice here, and her. we'll send An- Andrew, and he can face justice over I there. I forgot about her. We'll do like an exchange. That's what I thought, but they're not going to do that. Obviously, they're just going to hide him away and make sure and wait for the dust to settle. So, and the dust mm. settles pretty quickly these days, doesn't it? With just the news cycle so fast. Yeah, everything's Things the worst. The Every flash. day is the worst thing ever in your face, and every day is you know. And then you think, when we were kids growing up, we didn't really watch news, didn't really give a shit. Well, I certainly did. I stopped watching the news, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you Two said you did, now. yeah. But, like, when we were... When I was younger, you know, we were sort of living under the threat of Cold War. And surely that was a bigger deal than what we're facing now. But then, who knows with no. the Russia situation. Yeah, I think it's worse now. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes me feel uneasy as well. The way, the way we've just... The way the media pushes it and the way we wholeheartedly just throw ourselves behind Ukraine and there's flags everywhere all of a sudden. Like Go on. All for the support of Ukraine. I'm all for the support of Ukraine and Putin's a dick. We get that out, out of the way first. But the fact that you know, we just don't seem to recognise how much of a hand we slash America played in pushing you Putin into the corner that he's in that he's had to do that. Go on. Well after um after uh after the Cold War ended, it collapsed the Soviet Union. We said we wouldn't push any further east than Germany. And we kept doing it and kept pushing it east and get to a point where, you know, I mean, look at how America reacted with the Cuban Missile Crisis when they had the potential of having nukes on Cuba within reach of America. You know, that was a big deal. And now we're, we're going to have missile defences, which is the same as nukes, essentially. In Poland, defending from Russia, because you think about it, you had the whole you had the whole Cold War thing where everyone was racing to get nuclear power, and then we got to a point where we had mutually destruct mutually assured destruction. Yeah, mad. So quite apt in it, the mnemonic, so that they had both sides had enough to completely annihilate the other. So it was like a mutual agreement to, you know, start the slow nuclear disarming and stuff like that. But then the race goes towards who's got the missile defences. So it's so it's race into the missile defences to then allow your nukes to hit home. Then you win the nuclear arms race, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So now, if if Poland joins NATO, then we've got missile defences on Russia's border. So it's just a cat. It's just an extension of the Cold War, really, isn't it? Even though there's no Soviet Union. Instead of just allowing Russia its own space to develop and everything that's we seem to have sort of shafted it it's a little bit like how yeah i understand i understand i and i see that point of view that's probably the likely thing but also mm. i i think um russia haven't been good in all that period of time mate like it's not like they haven't been do doing mean, things yeah, to but they've, they've yeah but when you carved up the soviet union they had they had russian citizens all over different parts of different countries that were formerly part of the Soviet bloc that are now part of the, not part of the Soviet bloc and they do have responsibility to look after these people the people in the Donbass region were getting shafted by uh, paramilitary groups and stuff in from Kiev and central Ukraine yeah this, and so, uh, there's uh, two sides to every argument there, yeah. isn't it you, I mean it's human nature to want to say right that's the bad guy we'll support him that's a, nobody likes to see the nuance but there's loads of it yeah I mean the thing is the Ukraine is that uh, which, which one thing it doesn't it hasn't. I haven't seen it mentioned at all, really, in the in anything mainstream headline-wise. I happen to see on social media, Twitter, or whatever. Mm. 
is Anna. Ukraine was part of Russia not long ago. No, no. <laughs> like, That's why the Russia call long, it the Ukraine. Not long it's ago, a, it's Ukraine was part. Of, not long ago, Ukraine was part of Russia, and yeah, they both Russia. agreed that Ukraine could separate and become independent. Uh, basically, that's what happened, and yeah. which is why you've got a huge proportion of. Is it thirty percent of Ukraine are Russian? Russian ethnic. ethnic I don't Russian. know, but you can almost draw a line down the Dnieper, I think, and say that size. Which they might do. They might even just draw the line there. But mm. yeah. But it's all it's a foreign interest. It was Why all Why do you think Putin wants it now? It was to protect his own people. Yeah, one. In the Donbass region. From what? From persecution and being attacked. And and to stop having a NATO country on his border. And we, why do we want a NATO country on a Russian border? Surely we want a buffer zone. You know, we, want, we don't want to share a border with our with our enemy, and neither do they. Well, I, I think, don't know. It I just, think, it's just probably more difficult to defend, to defend just, a buffer zone, isn't it, than it is... Well, no, because then you've got... Yeah, it's it easier is. to have a buffer zone. rather than. A, otherwise, you're going to have the Cold War again, and you're going to have Berlin, and you're going to have... A checkpoint Charlie and you're gonna have all of that stuff, you're gonna have a build up of forces on the border and it's gonna go back to the old days and it's I don't know. Where do you think it's gonna go? What's gonna happen in Ukraine? What's the outcome uh, of Ukraine? Doing? Future I don't I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't like the idea of a strategic nuclear exchange. Nobody would, but I think we'd probably be one of the first targets. It'd be easier to hit than the US and it would send a message. That's what happened in um Team Yankee, the Cold War book in the eighties, they they they, they war game the Soviet Soviets rolling through and invading uh, okay. Germany, and uh, they they it did in the war game type. It's, it was a war game type thing that turned into a novel and stuff about a, a, a tank platoon. So how did it go? What happened in the story? Uh, they nuked Birmingham, um, and then Russia nuked Birmingham. R- Russia nuked Birmingham, and then American nukes uh, a rural Russian town. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, and then they then they climb down, then they step down, and then it all gets defused. But the warning shot is Birmingham getting nuked. But yeah, so I, I don't know. It just seemed, and we seem to be doing everything with the expense of America through. Like I don't know. It just it stinks. And it's, it's just the way that everybody's throwing Ukrainian flags everywhere. Like I mean, yeah, they're going through hell. Don't get me wrong. And and yeah, as I said before, Putin is a twat. But it's just the way everyone's so willing to do it, and and it doesn't mean anything because we could just drop it like a hot potato at any moment, and like we did with Afghan. Like how people have forgotten about that now and now. And what that worst of Afghan was an absolute clusterfuck, you know. And that was that was a place where we had blood and treasure in from the outset, and we had we trained a lot of those Afghan troops, not just the ANSF, but like you know the, the, the CF Triple Three guys and that, you know, Task Force Triple Four, and, and uh, you know. SFSG's job out that you know that we were integrated with those troops to a, a fine level, you know, and then we just bug out. And that's it. Just leave them to the Taliban, and I think a lot of them got got the good news at the end of that. And we just you know and it's yesterday's news now it's all forgotten about already. That's yes, after it, all that. Yeah, because no longer an advantage. It's yeah. one of the problems. Over and we'll U- do the same with Ukraine. We'll, one, we'll get one, bored of it. It's one of the problems. It's one of the problems over Ukraine is uh, is I don't see. I understand that there are people. Like there are people in there going through shit situations, civvies who don't, who shouldn't be going through that, right? You know, and getting mm. killed, maimed, injured, and all the psychological stuff and all the rest. Well, of it, it's right? war, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. right. But from so, if I was looking at it from a, so if you ignore the humanitarian side, right? If I was looking at it because because as much as we like to believe, it is not the humanitarian side that puts us into places to do these things. It is no. other, it's other reasons, no. right? Yeah, exactly. And what I don't and what I don't take comfort in. So when I look at Ukraine, I think, okay, what is the fucking reason you are? I'm, I don't I don't think it's to do with um, securing as securing America from Russian aggression in the future. I don't think that's the reason we're there. I don't think no. we stepped in. There's other reasons, right? And and the reason I say that is because we don't think that far forward. So I. Like we don't have that advantage. The advantage of that China, the China has, and Putin has, they yeah. can play the fucking long game. They're not. Well, they're not hampered by democracy. No, they can they play don't. the long game. China, perfect example. Mm. They started. They changed the way they were playing the game twenty years ago. They changed the way they were playing the game twenty years ago and went completely economic. Africa, for example, mm. sweeping up the middles. Over here, they do it through um, through organized crime. Believe it or not, it's mm. just just taking control everywhere through economic means mainly right Mm. not through anything else 
Russia can play a long game in terms of their strategy too. And they pretty much do the same thing apart from they've got the Crimea and things like that. But by mm. and large, they play, in a, they, they play it a different, a, a different way to what we play it, as in UK, mm. as in um, America. Now, what I, what I used to think literally until probably a month ago was it was a problem how short our terms are for the Prime Minister, yeah, yeah. for the President, how short they are. Now, there, yeah. are, there are pros and cons to having a short term like we have now. There are pros and cons to having a longer term, let's say 10 mm. years, for example, right? Yeah. Pros and cons to both. But one of the problems is I was thinking, they're, just short, they're not looking beyond the next no, election, no, no. right? In terms of planning. Mm. That really impacts when we do things, especially games, yeah. about things like Ukraine or Afghanistan, where that shit is going to last well beyond their term mm. of, uh, of, of their um, occupancy of the, of, the, uh, yeah. of, the, of the, what do you call it, of, of the prime, you know, they're the, they're the prime person, they're the leader, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the things Dom Cummings, uh, so I got someone, someone gifted me a subscription to Dom Cummings is uh, Substack. Oh, really? He puts out an article one time, uh, once mm. a month. I'll send you a couple of them, right? And mm. they are fucking brilliant. Now, I ne- Dom Cummins has been neither here nor there to me over the years. Mm-hmm. I hardly know who he is, right? I got gifted this uh, subscription to mm. Substack for two months. Mm-hmm. So when uh, an article comes out every month, and they're quite lengthy. Yeah. But he is, like, Dom Cummins is a guy. He's completely, he's completely neutral. He w- does not hide his complete, like, de- de- detest politics and politicians but he's mega at it right so he mm. i mean his articles he's literally slating everyone mm. bearing in mind he still works in that sphere like he's still a strategist he's still an advisor he's just come mm. back from the states that he, does, he doesn't care who slings under the, under the bus left right tory labor democrat mm. republican mm. he doesn't give a fuck he just says it how it is like what the he talks a lot about covid he talks a lot about anyway Amusingly, his nickname for Liz Truss. Oh, he said Liz Tr- when he was in doing the when when he before he left uh, Westminster mm. last time. Um, the nickname for Liz Truss within the party was uh, the Human Hand Grenade. Oh right. Because she's just fuck everything up. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. like yeah, yeah. yeah. He, there's loads of nicknames for jobs in there. Anyway, Dom Cummings is like this. He was saying they don't even in the last article. He said they they, they people think that. The politicians, they think to the next election. The prime minister thinks to the next election. That they don't think any further than that. It's all as far, that's only mm, as far as they mm. think the next election, whether yeah. it's one, two, three, or four years away. And he was saying that's not the case. They don't even think that far forward. Oh, right. It's not it even that, that far forward. Yeah, he said, it's, it's, oh, he literally yeah. said it. It's not that far forward. Yeah. It's to the next story or it's to the next decision that's been made that's going to bring them either good or bad attention. And, he, and he's, and mm. you know, and I believe him saying that. And yeah, I read yeah, it because yeah. yeah. reading all the other stuff and how honest and open he is about things. I mean, he's an element in his article. There's an element of like a bit of ego there. He's yeah, a ninja, yeah, mate. Yeah, he's yeah. a ninja, and he knows it. He's a fucking intelligent guy. He didn't mm. realize how fucking, and he and he pays a lot of attention to people like Bismarck and people like yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and and, and mm. military leaders and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, historical, but yeah. And when I when I read that, I thought, oh my god, they don't. It's not even looking. It's shorter than that. Mm. So, in the prime minister's mind, in the president's mind. How, like, what it changes how you, if they are not thinking the next election, they're thinking months ahead, yeah. not years yeah, ahead. Yeah. Then mm. you, and you th- you put yourself put that in your mind. Then think about the mindset they're in when something like Ukraine pops up. Then think about the motivations behind the decisions. What is going on? What is going on? Some of me, so what so part of me thinks that if that, in that mindset, part of me thinks is like if I was to boil down the pro the thinking process, it'd be okay. Uh, this. Thing Ukraine's happening. Uh, the question is, like, what do we do? Should we get involved? Should we not? Really? Like, mm. should we get involved militarily? Should we not? Uh, so, or in a significant way, should we not? And what, they're not thinking about what that means in the long term. They're thinking about what is the public opinion now, yeah, yeah. and how will that mm. fare for me in the next few months? Like, how what will it do for me, and also yeah, what yeah. will it do for my allies internally within the party? That's what they think, and that is worrying, very, very, very wor- worrying, because you got to. It's like playing chess. Like, if I went and played chess with Gary fucking Kasparov now, I can only think two moves ahead. I can't mm. think any further ahead because that's what I'm used to thinking because mm. I don't play chess very often. <clears throat> yeah, or I don't, yeah. I don't, I know it's like playing chess and I know I'm only playing chess for the next two moves. Yeah, two turns. Someone yeah. else is taking <laughs> over. All I want to yeah. do is survive those two moves. Yeah, yeah. Kasparov is playing 20, they are, uh, the, uh, those top chess players, they memorize 20, they're, 
not memorized, they're thinking mm. 27 moves ahead, Stuart. Yeah, yeah. I read that once in a chess book. I read a chess yeah. book once. 27 moves ahead. But in your analogy, they're allowed to think 20 moves and ahead. And they know <laughs> they're there for the full game. Yeah. Who's in charge now? Rishi. Rishi's in charge now. Rishi's in the game for the next so. two chess moves. Maybe three yeah. chess moves. Putin's in the game for the next 27 or whenever he fucking dies. Yeah. Like, we are at a significant disadvantage. It's the same, it's the same with America. Yeah, significant yeah. disadvantage. And I, I'd like all countries are in the West, like with democracy, but the difference is that you, the, America, hugely influential, obviously, and we are very influential as well. And also, we have to follow their fucking lead. It's just worrying. This is why mm. it worries me about this whole... It's why I don't think, I don't think it'll come to nukes, because Putin knows this. He knows mm. this is how we are, like, we are, we are hamstrung by our setup. Democracy is amazing. Like, it, it's all yeah. brilliant. But we are hamstrung in this battle between us and them. He knows he can outplay us. It's just the long game. The problem is, like, there's the allegations, not allegations, there's these rumours that he's ill, yeah, cancer yeah, and all this, and, yeah. and, and whether that's going imp, to impact his uh, decision making. I think more likely, so from what I've read about him, uh, and what I've read about his intent, and I've read a lot about uh, Soviet, uh, Soviet, uh, fucking Soviet Russia, and and I've read a couple of books about Putin. Uh, there's a really good one called Putin's Wars, and I think it's more likely just because the he has like absolute love and desire for Russia and intent to just secure it and um, and mm. re yeah. So so when the news say he wants to he wants to restore it to Soviet Russia, it's not what he wants. It doesn't. It's not necessarily wants to do in terms of oh let's bring communism back into what it was then. Well, I'm not defending you. I'm just making the point. Yeah, he's yeah. like he's got what it is now. He wants to restore it to the power it once was in mm. whatever way is the best way to do that, which is basically a bigger version of what it is now. So I think it's more likely that that because it's in his blood, mate. He's like a die-hard patriot who ha- who's happens to be at the top of the fucking tree. I think it's more than likely that his intent will be to leave it in the best position possible going forward mm. with a good success assessor to take over. And the nuclear war isn't the way to go about that. No, no, no. No, I don't no but uh, I don't know. Maybe even a short nuclear exchange. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to talk about it because the, the, the concept of it is it's pretty dark, isn't it? But, um, yeah, yeah, I agree. I just think we don't think of... We're hamstrung by our democracy because we can only ever think, think short term. We can't can't play the long game, and that's what they can do. So they they can they can make models and predict well, we're what ham- we're going to do every four years. And as long as they keep us busy worrying about other stuff. Well, so, no, I think we're, ham- we're not hamstrung by democracy. We're hamstrung by the, the way the democracy is now, right? So there's a problem. I like I, re- I like I really think it needs to. You reckon longer terms? No, no, because no, no, because it's no. I don't think so. Because then, right. if we got a shit one, it's no, going to take a while to get one. No, no, I don't think so. Right? What I th- what what I think the problem is, is that. Uh, is that um, it's a problem with the quality of people that are within government. And I mean here, mm. and I mean America, and probably some other places, right? It's a problem of, of, of the quality of people that are in government and what motivates them and drives them to make decisions, I think is the problem, right? So you've got a problem with the people, and that problem with the people who are there is because of the problem that is set, the way it's set up. It's like, so I think... We started off well. What has happened is capitalism, the cap, like the way mm. capitalism works and the economy, things have evolved to such a point and so fucking quickly over the last 10 years as things changed, right? Especially in social media, information, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, communication, yeah. It's all technical, of that. It's, a technology it's changed thing, so it? fucking quick. Yeah, the technology mm. and the economy changed mm. so quick that. So, you, what normally happens is things, all the technology and all the influences that that influence society, government, politics, mm. all of that stuff. They evolve, they, they go to get, they grow together and thing each one slightly tests and adjusts to account for new new developments in other areas. Oh, new technology available has changed the way we're doing this. New new you know, new uh, new significant demographic of the UK population. Oh let me mm. chest just mm. test and adjust. Mm. And uh, there's been a bunch of stuff that has just changed really fucking quickly. Mm. Really fucking quickly over the last ten years. And what hasn't changed at all at all is the way is our governance the political governance it hasn't changed mm. at all like the mass immigration things happened huge huge influx right of um of uh, people who aren't eth- ethnic who are of ethnic minorities now 
uh, I'm not against immigration. I've got zero immigration happens. It's like a fucking natural thing. I am against mass immigration. Like, I, I, it is not good, right? So, and they're two very different things there. So, no issue with immigration. Mm. Like, a multicultural society. You got, I grew up with fucking multicultural. You know, even in Wales, I grew up with, you know, which is probably, you know, le- one of the least accommodating in, in general of people who aren't from Wales. Like, in, like back in the day, I grew up in a multicultural. You know, I, I played. Uh, I used to play rugby with the first ever Muslim. Englishman. No, the, uh, the first ever Welsh. Uh, the first ever Muslim. Uh, lad, Muslim guy. I say guy. I say lad because he was with schoolboys. First ever Muslim to get a Welsh cap. Sh- shout yeah. to Shabazz Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking right, mega okay. dude. Anyway, so uh, so like that's that has changed rapidly. What have we changed? Mm. We fucking we haven't changed. We haven't pivoted fast enough to deal with that. When I say deal with it, I don't mean oh turn it off, stop it. I mean to deal with it properly because we've obviously got a problem now. It's impacting lots of things. Other things that have changed. Technology. Back to the, the point of the last 10 years, communication, smartphones, social media, that has changed how everything, that's probably the mm. biggest impact. Yeah. That has changed how, this is one of the major problems with why polit- politicians behave the way politicians do and why they see, they're see they looking so short-sighted now. Yeah, yeah. Because the impact, they're putting a foot wrong, something goes right, well, and they are fucked. Mm. And next thing, their Liz Truss has been in office for 42 fucking days because X, Y, and Z. So my point is, all these things have, all these things have evolved so several things have evolved super quick and changed. Mm. Our political system has not has not changed. You end so you end up with more opportunity to exploit, more opportunity to defraud, more opportunity for corruption. I mean, look at the COVID situation. Like mates rates, contracts going here and everywhere, mm. politicians mm. pocketing money because and just completely exploit the system. Yeah, it shouldn't yeah. be allowed. And the re, and and yeah, but a lot of that's to do with the misinformation that spread as well. Yeah, but they're, they're just a symptom. So dickheads in there looking short term and exploiting the system like that's just a symptom of a, a a bad system the system is bad it needs changing it really needs changing you shouldn't be able to have a pol- you shouldn't be what you want to have is a politician who, the majority of politicians are there to serve the people and do what's good for the country primarily and and them as a secondary thought secondary thought or them were thinking, oh, yeah, I'll benefit yeah, from this indirectly, it's, right? But it's, it's it's different to what it used to be. Like they're they're paid decent wages now. They never used to get paid a lot. Politicians, you never got that much money. So they were in it for the right reasons, not to you know line their own pockets and set themselves up for businesses and corporations and stuff after their time in office and uh, you know maybe or or no, they were in no, it because it they it could. No, it was different. No, it's a power thing. It's uh, well, power, power, yeah. But it, it, yeah, but it seems to be. I don't know. No, but, but the power thing is a money thing. Some people talk about money. But the power thing is a money thing. It's a control thing. It's lining your own pockets. Maybe not financially, but mm. security-wise. Um, uh, but it needs... But either way, it's not for the good of the country, is it? It's not... No, exactly. It's less concern about legacy and more and concern about le- feathering your own nest. What you can't, what, see, what you can't do... See, what, what you can't do is, is ignore the fact that people... Like, the most important thing to you... Bar none, is you and your family. Yeah, you can't. That's human nature. You yeah, can't yeah, deny yeah, that. It's yeah, the same yeah. for the politicians. Mm-hmm. The most important thing to them is them and their family. That is the most important thing. Yeah, hang on, hang yeah, on, yeah, hang yeah. on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, right. Yeah. So what you need in place, so I, what you need in place is a system, checks and balances that almost entirely prevent the opportunity to profit, be that monetarily or some other way. When you shouldn't, no, 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 yeah, 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 profit in some way that you shouldn't from your decisions that you're making in Parliament for your constituents as the yeah. Prime Minister, or, as whatever. You shouldn't, or, you should, and we just don't have it. It's bullshit. Or you change the whole voting process so you don't have the, you know, the proportional representation. So who you vote for is a vote for that person rather than. I'm going to vote Tories, even though I don't like Tories, because even though I hate the Tories, I hate Labour more. So therefore, it's got to be one of those two. So therefore, I'm going to vote Tories. When in actual fact, I want to vote Greens. I want to vote UKIP. I want to vote whatever. Because they speak to me more because they represent my points of view. If you could pick the person that you wanted to vote for yeah, to get into the place. you can't change that, can you? Yes, you can. How change can your you voting change? system. Go on. Because at the moment, it's not proportional representation. The person you vote for doesn't get your vote. Like, you vote for your person... And then it's added up in the county area that you're in, and then whoever gets most votes in that county, that person then stands. Yeah. Yeah? Your vote doesn't go to the party that you want to be in power. 
you you have to tactical vote. Like if you didn't have to tactical vote and everyone could vote on what they were honest, you could have more parties involved and you oh, could have more, right. more someone more to represent your interests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then you'd have and rather especially in America where you've got two parties and that's it. And that is it. Like if you've got any sort of nuance. No, but no, no. So there's an issue with this, Stu, right? I, I, I sorry. I and see then an you issue. could you could you could curtail the corruption no, and I stuff see, as well. I see, no, so what you're so yeah, but so but what people think about their party, right? So what people think about the party is based on what they see fucking online, right? And and why pay like from my perspective, I think when people this is what it should be. Mm. When people vote, because uh, like you said, you're voting for your your local constituent, right? When people vote. They they should only be concerned about what what they see it impacts them most, right? So imagine now if no one had the ability to, no one was able to, you could switch off people's thoughts about what the public opinion of Tories is or Labour is, or what other were, were no. saying. Yeah. All they were able to do is look at on paper. In fact, take the fucking parties out of it. Look at, look on paper at someone, and they just v- literally vote for the person based on who they are, not about their misconceptions yeah, 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 or yeah, preconceptions yeah, about Labour yeah. or Tory or Green or yeah. Lib Dems or anything. Okay. They only voted for that. So then they're voting about the things that matter to them most that are generally going to impact yeah, them, yeah. and that is a local thing. No, but it doesn't make any difference because you end up voting. What matters most about your your interests are represented mostly by someone, but you don't vote for them. Because the negative person that's going to come in is more important, so you do a tactical vote against the negative person. That's that's how it works. Because hmm. y- your vote doesn't go to that. Oh, yeah, party. I'm, I'm saying it shouldn't be that. Yeah, it, sh- it shouldn't yeah, be no. that way. Yeah, and then if it was like that, you would probably vote for more honest politicians. Uh, I mean, I I don't think an honest politician survives a career in politics. <laughs> I think they just get. I think to get that far in politics and be where you are. In Downing Street, in Parliament, in government, you need to be a snake. You don't get that far if you're honest. I don't think. Yeah, I unless you change, well, unless you I drastically mean, change the way the voting system, and you can seriously. Yeah, well, I mean, the Mercers have summed this up quite well recently, and and they and I thought. Oh this, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah, this for man, a while. Is yeah. that that's your mm. point? You, you you, like, like Johnny Mercer. I like him. Got a lot of time for him. Mm. Spent time with him. I think he's an honest guy. Right. Yeah. Same with Dan Jarvis. Yeah. Labour. Yeah, yeah. I spent time with him. Good guy. I like him. Yeah. I think he's honest, right? And funnily enough, both opposite sides of opposite the political sides, spectrum right? as well, yeah. Um, but, well, to, to, to say what I think either Felicity or Johnny said, mm. I think Felicity said it on a recent interview. It's like, when you when you go there, you when Johnny said it, I think, he got an, he got an intent, he's got an aim, right? He wants, mm. to, he wants to achieve X, Y, or Z. Mm. An office for Veterans Affairs, yeah, for yeah, example. Yeah. yeah. yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, or an, uh, a minister in the cabinet, right, for veterans, right, veterans yeah, minister, yeah. right, wants to get there. Now, along that way, because of the party politics, there's going to be all sorts of votes and all sorts of stuff and demonst- uh, and uh, support he's going to need to show or not show. Mm. You're going to need to get certain people on side to enable that end thing. Mm, yeah, yeah. To enable it to be righted. And he has to play the, toe the line along the way. So so sometimes, instead of doing d- voting in a certain vote, you know, of some fucking ballot for whatever, instead of voting the way he actually thinks a decision should go because that's what he believes in his heart and, well, this is the right thing to do. But he knows if he does that, he's going to lose support from X, Y, or Z person or thing that's going to impact the end goal, which is, for example, the Office of Veterans Affairs. Mm. So sometimes you have to vote against what you actually think, sometimes even not in line with what your constituents think, right? Yeah. It's, it's that snake thing. It's the snake game. Mm. You have to be dishonest. And yeah. again, just to reinforce what you say, again, it is the problem with politics. Honest people having to be dishonest. Honest people, or people who are supposed to represent the constitu- their constituents, not represent the fucking constituents. One of the mm. things that breaks me is that. You mm. see an MP in office, you know that the weight of their, their constituents, you voted for, let's say it's a yes or no vote for something. Yeah. The overwhel- Brexit's a good the example. Overwhelming, well, that's a bad example. Overwhelming. When it's a good example of MPs misrepresenting who their constituents are there was like from both sides of the coin with brexit there were brexiteers that had remainer constituencies and you had Mm. remainer mps that had brexit constituencies and then the mp and and the mp goes and votes opposite to what the constituents thinks yeah they should be fucking sacked they should be fucking yeah. sacked. Yeah. Absolutely sacked. This is one of the major problems. I like I've mm. said in the past, it's kind of like Gaz Walsh discussed with it. I don't think we don't I don't think I'm not convinced we need MPs anymore, local MPs. I just don't think we need it. Like the, I need to think through this more. Like, but yeah. my like I do. 
but my feeling is right so again it goes back to the point of we've got a completely date system that isn't, yeah, isn't yeah, needed yeah, yeah, yeah. it is there are too mm. many people yeah it's not from you know from the 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 minister side to the civil servant side it's too many fucking people who don't need it all mm. mps existed back in the day one of the reasons one of the main reasons they came about is because you couldn't communicate what chepstow what the people of Chepstow wanted to happen, what they thought about mm. something. He couldn't communicate that to Parliament, representing the Parliament. Yeah. Oh, let's have a, an MP from there, and they'll yeah. represent it. They would go, they would listen to what the town said. Town, oh, oh, Chepstow wants to vote yes for yeah, this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm. Go to Parliament. Yeah, Chepstow wants to vote yes. Right, but why the fuck are we doing that anymore? We don't need that. It's this mm. opportunity for corruption. That individual MP there can go into Parliament and think, oh, Chepstow want this. Uh, but... But yeah, yeah, yeah. I want something else for X, Y, Z, nefarious reason. I'm going to know not to vote what they what they want to vote. I'm going to fucking change it. Mm. It's just bullshit. It's yeah, just yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. It goes back to the point of the the system is fucked. Yeah. This is not fucked. The system has been outgrown. Yeah, we've yeah. got a mm. we've got a governance system that exists uh, that is good for for governing a country. But governing England, governing the UK in the 1800s, the early mm. 1900s, uh, maybe getting yeah, into yeah. the late mm. 1900s. Not now. No, it's not with not technology changed. we've got. Well, there's now. a lot of stuff we could do with technology in terms of voting. And, and yeah, why can't we as a country vote on individual things that they talk about in Parliament? Like cut the, cut the whole straight through the middle of it. Or even assign yourself to a voting lobby that will vote away for you in a way that you want to do it, I rather than exactly mm. right. Now there is a problem with that as well. So, so uh, right. So, why can't you? And I, I, one of the things I've thought about the last few years, yeah. what, I, what I coined digital democracy, right, is mm. to my point about MPs, right. But I've just thought this. I'm not saying it's the perfect example, and, it, and it's definitely flawed, right. Okay. But you live uh, in uh, number two High Street, Chepstow. Right, so this is in a mm. this is in a different Shh, world. Look, I don't tell everybody. Number two. <laughs> <I'm sorry laughs> house. <laughs> number you don't live in number. I wonder who does live in number two High Street Chepstow. <laughs> <laughs> number two High Street Chepstow. Stu Hale lives there. Right, this is how mm -hmm. this is how it now works. Your phone pings up. Right, it's it's uh, I don't know it's eight a.m. on Friday morning, and the votes come through. The fucking the th stuff comes at eight a.m. Yeah. Your phone pings up with an app on it, and it says, uh, um, uh, we the 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 road. Uh, the the main road is to be expanded. Uh, we want to mm. expand the main road by another lane. Yeah. Uh, here are the impacts. It's going to be six months of work. Um, it's going to mean a 10p rise on tax for the next five years to cover the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. There's going to be delays of up to X amount of hours for three months until blah, 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 blah. Uh, these, are the, these are the cons. These are the benefits. Yeah, long term. Yeah. As long as they're sort of equal. Uh, do you want to do that mm. or not? And you yeah, go, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Right? Literally press yes or no. Yeah. That's it. That's immediate, right? Mm. And maybe that vote's been triggered because, because over the course of a year, several people in the, in the area mm. or from outside the area who impacted yeah. have gone, yeah, mm. in, and all of a sudden gets put to a vote. Yeah. Digitally, voting on straight away, right? Mm. And the way you were selected to respond to that vote is the system, digital democracy system, when a suggestion like that comes in, first off, it validates that who's suggesting it. Okay, do they have a right to suggest something like this? Are they materially impacted by that road? Either they live in the constituency mm. or they mm. use it a lot. There is yeah, a supplier yeah. from somewhere else, fucking whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it goes, okay, and then it selects all the people who should be eligible to vote because they will be. They are also materially impacted by the outcome of that vote if it was to go through. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. As an example. However, there is a flaw. So if you digitize everything, like it, it, I like going majority digital because I, because I think in terms of governance like this, because I think compared to the now system, the less people are involved, you need people involved, but the less human beings that are involved, the less like analog conversations that have gone on like this, mm. you know, the less opportunity for bribery and corruption there are and, um, yeah. and lobbying and all that. What the fuck is lobbying all about? What a joke. Mm. Like, just shocking. People are getting paid to go and persuade other people to do stuff. They don't, they don't, they don't persuade other party members or non -part, or like uh, uh, mm. uh, opposing party members to do something by going, I'll do this, it's going to be really good. You do it because it's, yeah, right, on the next vote, can you vote uh, for this, please? And uh, we'll make sure you get 
this mm. benefit, this benefit, this benefit, and we'll make sure that we'll vote mm. with you on the yeah. next one, blah, 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 blah. We'll give you a, night what, in, yeah. a load of shit. So the less people mm. are involved, the less room there is for bribery yeah. and corruption. But there's so much momentum behind the system the way it is that you'll never get that to oh, You can't change it. It would be but, a revolution, uh, wouldn't uh, it? But, but back, yeah. A back digital to the revolution. Point, back to the point, they're so short-sighted mm. and, it's so, and it's such a, what do you call it, when it's, um, cl- it's such a kleptocracy. It's a big word, isn't it? Kleptocracy, yeah. That, uh, that it just won't fucking change. Mm. It just won't change. We, uh, and it does it does let me to think of going back to the whole geopolitical thing of stability it does lead, lead, lead me to think I just can I can only see things getting worse and worse less stable and less stable for the next 10 to 20 years until something like that happens either in this country like not mm. a revolution per se but a, a, a just not a revolution per se but something that significant happens maybe mm. not here maybe in America where it is like it just shakes you to the core of the country and go, you need to wake the fuck up. You need to wake up. I think it's more likely to be a civil war in America. Oh, I think it's something like that. Some weird three or four sided civil war, some weird thing. America's imploded, mm. mate. It America, does seem it. it America, does seem America it. is But then how much of that is also sensationalist media? No, it's it? imploding. It's imploding. Is it really? Mate. Yeah, it's imploding. 100%. Yeah, maybe. 100%. It needs to be changed. It's not going to happen. Something's, yeah, something's got to give in there. Because what we and don't and want is the alternative is where the system continues like it is and through the destabilization of like the uh, and discontent society and people just like, what the fuck? Because right now, I think also people are becoming, they're just switching off to what's going on. It's so crazy. stuff going on, on all the time. Mm. They're paying less attention to it and placing less importance and va- uh, less importance on things that they should be paying attention Real to. Things, yeah, CBDCs, yeah. stuff like that. You yeah, know, digital a, IDs, uh, digital, uh, digital passports. Yeah. Uh, all of that yeah stuff. stuff's getting snuck through and people aren't noticing it yeah yeah sure but th- I mean that's been the same forever like people have always been more interested in soap operas in the 80s than they did about watching the news mm. about the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan yeah. you know in my house Coronation Street was on not that you know so I think most people are like that to be honest they switch off and yeah. they'll just get distracted by the latest thing it's part of the smoke and mirrors I guess isn't it yeah Keep people it's distracted worrying. with all their petty, petty and, arguments and that, as well. that is, and that is worrying though, because you, you you want in order to have effective, you know, opinion on things and these votes we're talking mm, about and, mm. and 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 getting and getting yeah. stuff done in in government in parliament that is good for society. You need yeah. you need society to be aware of what the fuck is going what on is actually going or on, what yeah, could yeah, happen. Yeah. You know. yeah, but like, and also finding the truth is difficult because some things can seem contradictory and yet still both be true at the same time and again that that that, that seeps into the nuance thing which we seem to lose a lot of that now don't we everything's got to be black and white straightforward this this guy's the good guy this guy's the bad guy everything you know mm. i stand for this there's never any nuance but yeah yeah bring on the digital revolution <laughs> it's also a bad thing, though. It's also a bad thing. Well, it's it's we're, we're still learning uh, how to cope with our own technology, aren't we? Because biologically, we are still we're still chimpanzees, aren't we? We still we're still a tribal species, you know. And now we've got this thing that can communicate us with the whole world, and it's insane, you know. If we just spoke to ourselves twenty years ago and said, you know, I've got a device in my pocket that. 20 years ago? We did have one. We did have a device in the phone. It was the phone. 2002, Just about. Well, yeah, yeah. But before that, then, if you were to say... And and even then, it was just a a phone and then a tech service, wasn't it? If you were to say, I can just communicate with anyone in the world anytime, right now, see their face and have a video call at any point in time, it's mind-bending, wouldn't it? It it would be back then. Mm. And so now, you know, we're, we're tribal creatures, but we've got this ability to put our inner thoughts immediately out, and it's just not healthy. You know, because you say things you don't want to say, people, and people, or you, you can change what you say to the point before you press send, whereas normally you'd say it and then it'd be said. Um, you know, people, we're losing our ability to communicate socially, person to person, because we're relying so much on our devices and things like that. So, it, it, yeah, like you say, it's it's the sharp rise in technology, and we're trying to catch up with it. Technology is moving too quickly for the biology to keep up. 
I think. Mm. And we're still we're still basic human beings, aren't we? We're still tribal. That's why everything's racist and you know political. Everything's like all far left, far right, and, and everything everything's polarized. Um, it's just a tri our tribal nature, isn't it? I think. Ask you a question on that. Actually, I had mm. uh, Hannah Shergold on recently. Uh, episode 185 and 186 she came back in for the second time okay. uh, but on the first on the first podcast so she she described some like sexist experience, experiences where she'd experienced sexism when she was mm. serving so she was a Lynx pilot right okay uh, multiple tours yeah, of the places yeah. like very experienced and um, oh god and she was yeah she described some like sexist stuff she'd experienced sexism yeah, quite, yeah. quite yeah. often throughout and so it wasn't nice I, I don't mean like uh be abuse or that. Yeah, yeah. well, that would be abuse, not sexism. But um, where we go with this? Oh yeah, but I was fucking like really shocked. Surprised by that it. that was her experience. Yeah, because you don't see it, do you? Because you're well, you're from a different well, perspective. This was gonna well, this was, well, well. So I was gonna ask you, but she, but no, but she described it working alongside some units we're very familiar with. Hmm. And um, I I don't remember. Ex seeing or experiencing any of that so the, like her opinion on it was her the way she, no, mm. not her opinion the way she sees it through her her experience is yeah. that women are most likely to be subject to sexism in units mm. that don't have any women right now i don't remember it being like that i when we were in like we were three part right i mm. always remember when we had we all and I was part of different companies in the tunes, like yeah, you yeah, were. It's yeah. like not like we were yeah. all in the same with the same bubble all the mm -hmm. way through. We changed about. I always remember when when a woman or women were attached to us to the unit for whatever mm. a training exercise or an operation. Yeah, it wasn't. They weren't looked on with disdain. It was like fascination. It was fascination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was almost like jealousy. I'm just generalizing jealousy of of whichever like subunit she was part of. Like attached to a platoon or attached to a you know a, a company HQ oh, yeah. because you, you got because the, everyone wanted yeah. to try and get friendly, you know, in the back of their <laughs> yeah, mind. That's, that's the how problem. I remember it. It's but like, then I guess that's the it, problem, isn't it? Because that's sexually like, motivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like the opposite <laughs> of no. But the thing she described, mate, were like, well, like actually like nasty abuse type right, thing. Like 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 uh, soldiers being told that they couldn't speak more than two words to her when she spoke to them. She was a fucking like never mind. The woman, like, she was an officer. She wasn't, like, oh, even, yeah, like, a, yeah, some yeah, some yeah. top, some private, some clerk who, mm. you know, been in for two seconds. She was an officer. And you've got a, a senior NCO telling mm. his guys they're not allowed to speak more than two words to her because she's a woman. Mental. Well, but, a, well because he doesn't want them to fire into her and chat her up and Because she didn't want a woman attached. Oh, maybe. Oh, right, that right, could right. have been a motivation. Maybe it's, like, trying that to keep on top of his blokes. Like, if, yeah. God, if you say more than two words to her, you shitbag. Because I yeah, know what you're like. You'll, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll be down on knickers in no time. Yeah, but might I, have been like I, that. But I doubt. You might I, have had a, Maybe not. I yeah, don't but, know, but not. let's think about this conversation yeah. with, with Hannah, if that had come up. But Hannah, maybe <laughs> the senior NCO was just trying to protect you. <laughs> well, protect I don't think she. Blokes. No, I don't know. and, and I don't so know. She, she described a bunch of incidents. Yeah. And we talked yeah. about it as well off air afterwards. Yeah, we yeah, went for yeah. lunch after. Yeah, we talked about it there. And I was like, we. To the point where it caused me to rethink. I thought, am I misremembering yeah, my service? Yeah, yeah. Because am I misremembering the way women were treated? Yeah. Because I always generally remember tr women being treated at, at least average to the blokes, mm. on average to the mm. blokes. Generally. It doesn't mean stuff didn't happen where I didn't see it, right? But to my point, I was in a bunch of different units, teams, mm. companies, platoons, at different times, in different circumstances, training operations, camp, you know, um, Stuff like that, and and I, I didn't see any of that. I didn't see any yeah, of it. Yeah, but then I, you're not gonna because your perspective is different, you know. But I would notice. No, no, no. I would notice if a guy was being a cock to a woman when I was serving. I would notice that and remember it because I'm not someone who's a cock to women. Yeah. You're just all a of the time, you're not a all of the time. You're a my missus, to everybody. <laughs> my missus, would dis my missus would disagree, but you know, it's. I would remember it. I, I would remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there weren't also there weren't mm. a lot of. I don't remember uh, many women along that that time I served. There yeah. were. There just weren't. I, I remember most of them who were there, and I don't remember. They getting, I certainly remember. I, I didn't mm. mistreat them. You know, and I, I know, and I never saw anyone else mistreating them. Again, it goes back to it was the opposite. It was the opposite. They were like welcomed. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially on operations. Especially on yeah, operations. Yeah, operations are different. Like, you've got to crack on, aren't you? And I think on operations, when you're operating as like a company group, you know, your company clerks are your company clerks. You take ownership of them and they're part of your tribe then, aren't you? Well, the, yeah, the, and the, clerk, and they yeah, do the their, clerk's a different example. Yeah, but that's the only woman, female you'll see on no, no, generally no, no. in a company no. company environment. Medics, police... Medics, yeah, we're police, attached arms. The, yeah, yeah, but that's that, that's like you got the female yeah. engagement teams. Yeah, but like a permanent company location. You oh, right, I meant on the ground, not ops, on ops. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, and, and yeah, it's, on the ground's different again. Yeah, I suppose it's different. Yeah, mm. it is different, and you do, it is more mm. positive ops because yeah, yeah. everyone's got a value. It's like yeah, especially yeah. when you're on the ground. You don't you don't bring driftwood with you. Everyone who's going on the ground is there for a fucking reason. Yeah. They have to be there for mm. a reason, you know. So everyone has value. And let's uh, or you know this from from times so really my my time with three para I fucking yeah. loved it. I like lo- most of it. I loved right. Yeah. And one of the Same. things I always look back on fondly about it is, man, how how for the most part, how fucking professional and dedicated and driven we were to being mega at what we were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Generally, mm, I, I just, mm. I, fucking hell. No one wants to lose face, yeah, do they? Yeah. Mm. Also, yeah. look back and fondly at surviving in what is, what uh, I had recently got described to me as this, and I thought, yeah, 100%, the most, like, alpha male dominant environment, the most masculine environment I have ever fucking been in and ever will be. Three power of the nose New Year's was crazy. Like when you think about it like that, mate, how what well, you know, every every bloke was just it was just constant out masculine in each other. Constantly. Constantly. Right? Anyway, that's a different point. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. It was. It was fucking like it, it, it wasn't well let's put it this way, it wasn't an era. Because at the because of the era it was the all the operations and probably many other units experienced the same thing. Mm. Sweet spot of operations. Island was going on. At one point, Ireland, Iraq and Afghan were all going on still. Yeah, yeah. They were all going on yeah, still. Yeah, going on. In one year, I think time. we did all three, or within a two-year period, yeah. did a tour of all three. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right, yeah. And, and so I think, yeah, these probably experienced the same thing because you had to be on top of your game. It was mm. so fucking rigid. You were bouncing from training to operation, yeah. you know, preparation to operation to come back, and then you just, you just had to be on top of your game. What was the fucking point I was making there? Uh, about valuing um, women women on ops that are attached and stuff blah 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 blah. I don't know where I was going did you experience mm. did you ever experience any sexism when you were serving I didn't but like you said we did didn't. anyone treat you differently because you're a woman <laughs> <laughs> did you serious question no I didn't I've asked a I bunch mean, of I didn't say any but again I think it's perspective because I, I, I was chatting to my I'm wife I'm not saying did I, it exist I'm asking if you experienced it I'm asking no, you. No, I wasn't it. sexually abused. No. no, 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 no. Did you see, experience any yeah. sexism towards women towards when you women. were serving? No, not directly. No, I don't think so. But then again, I, like I say, it's, not it's perspective. Not directly. Can not I not directly. finish what I'm saying? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. What I'm saying <laughs> is <get> perspective. <laughs> yeah, it's annoying. Every time I say something, you talk over me. But yeah, it's, it's, it's perspective. Like my, my wife said, um, I was chatting to my wife about something, and she was, she was on about blokes that beat the car owner her and, and stuff when she's walking down the street. And uh, They're I, fucking morons. Right? Where's she driving? And I, and I thought... Mental. And I thought... No, I, I, I mean, they're more... Like, like that's mad that people... I find that amazing that people do that in yeah, the 21st yeah, yeah. century. Yeah, that's it's what mental. I think. That's exactly what I said. I was like, people don't do that anymore. Like, that's, that was like something that they did in like the 70s and the 60s and stuff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And my, my wife was like, oh, you sweet summer child. Yes. <laughs> And then, sure enough, I'm walking down the street with her, and then someone does it. And my immediate reaction is me bristling, because, like, my wife, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then I just thought, that really does go on. Blokes do slap women's asses and wolf whistle and, and sort of well, behave that way. Well, she mentioned that, actually. And, Hannah and mentioned like, that. Like, she would walk into an office, and every time she walked in, in, in one, one place she was yeah. at, the, the, the boss would slap her ass. Yeah. Mad. That's Madness. mental. It is mental. And we're talking the like 2010, 2011, 2012 time. I think we're yeah. talking yeah. mental. Mm. I remember the last. And that's I, what I thought. And and again, it's because perspective. I don't. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't. You don't got experience that yourself personally, but it doesn't mean it do not go on. I know. I know. I, I know that. I know. Mm. The reason I asked you because I've asked a bunch of people. Yeah. Right since that. That and podcast. they'll say they can't remember. Do they say the same as me? Like they can't remember seeing anything? Uh, really one of them. So I asked a range of people from different units. Because one one mm. night I was sat with seven people. Oh and right. They were from. There was uh, there was three from SIGs. 
six mm. or four from like six. There was one guy who's ex bootneck Royal Marines. Okay. There was an uh, there was another guy. So already you've got one. two units that have mixed genders. What? So already two of the units have mixed genders serving in the ranks anyway. Six and bootnecks. Boot yeah. yeah. And then uh and um and they were different ranks. Okay, some of them so they've got, just you've got the some various experiences officers. as well, yeah. Yeah, and, and all of them basically said, no, didn't experience it. One of the guys said, he said, uh, he basically had, but nothing nothing really serious at some point. Didn't go into detail. I can't, he did it. No, he mm, did go into I can't remember what it was. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, mm. whatever it was. I was like, oh, okay, that's fucking, I'll get nothing. Um, but it, it is, like, if you, I have to say it, because there's obviously blogs out there behave like this. If you're a guy who fucking wolf whistles a woman walking down the street, right, or beeps a fucking hot chick or any chick yeah. when you're driving past them, you need to get a grip of yourselves. Like, what fucking planet are you on? Yeah, but it's, you know, it's the, crazy. You know, the worst thing, though, is my missus used to like it. She it used to give her the confidence but, check of saying, I still got it. Uh, Do you know what you, I mean? And there is that, right? And there, and there is mm. that. I, yeah, mm. yeah I, got, I understand that. But also... <laughs> but no, it's not it's right behaviour. I would never do that. I would never it's do that. It's fucking madness. Yeah. And another one... Funny sometimes, just, though, when I was uh, younger. When you used to do, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. I got a mate. I got a mate who, when he would see a... This is growing up in Wales. Who, when he would see a good-looking woman mm. uh, um, uh, with a pram, he would wind down the window... And ask her if she wanted to practice another one. Baby in the pram. Okay, yeah. Different world. Different world. Back weird, then. Isn't it? Yeah. Different world. Very weird. Yeah. Very weird. But to your point, some some women would be like, ah, oh, yeah, and mm. just laugh it off. Others would not. But it shouldn't happen. Mm. Like, it just because because you don't know what the reaction's going to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why would you yeah, want to yeah, yeah. potentially risk upsetting someone or make everyone feel different because they're something they can't change? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Unless you didn't give a shit. Which, is what, it's, which is what it's about. Yeah. It's what it's about. It's like, why are you, make, why are you risking making someone feel like a cunt? You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. But whether it's a woman, whether it's someone who's got different skin color to you, whether it's someone who's like flipping height afflicted, whether it's, I don't know, short, dwarf or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But short, you know, fat, it's like, why would you want to risk yeah. that? You know, mm. I, I, uh, yeah, it's just, um, it's just, uh, you, like, and that's not that's not like woke talking that's just no it's just common human decency yeah yeah it's one of those steps right because you it's one of the it may seem I, I guess there may be some people listen to this and think oh, what the fuck nothing fucking wrong with that it's just a bit of a laugh whatever mm. and, but I think it's one of those it's one of those steps forward that you need to take that has to have been taken like wolf whistling and like, like sexism stuff right which is completely acceptable and not over the over the line because it is like it's it's something that has to be there to stop to stop like sexism slipping back into where it was before it's like the line mm. you know it's like the line verbally verbal basically mistreatment yeah you know what i mean Am I making sense there? Yeah, kind of. It's 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 weird though, isn't it? Because you don't want to go too far the other way. And you know, I sort of think about my son. He's he's what twenty twenty one now. Well, he, like you know on. what I mean. And I think like he he's at an age where he might you know I want to chat up a girl or whatever. But the way things are at the moment, it might be so such an intimidating task to just talk to a woman, anyway. Let alone all of the social. Could I if I said the wrong thing? She might take it the wrong way. She might. Uh, do you know what I mean? You know, it might just might not even bother because it's <laughs> it's so scary. Because yeah, she could misinterpret also, something. It could be seen as sexist. You could yeah, be labelled yeah, as something, yeah, and yeah, then you're yeah. like, "Well, okay, I was only genuine asking if we could go out or well, something." Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. There is that example. A workplace is a good example. So you got the workplace mm. rules in place, where um, like a I say workplace rules it's so what you call it abuse of power stuff where you if you're the boss you can't not supposed to yeah, yeah. relation it's not advice to have relationship but on your point there about oh, sorry i was on about like verbal abuse kind of thing like wolf, wolf whistling or mm. or like beeping the horn or something like that right um there's that line which i think is acceptable yeah, to say yeah. don't do that yeah shit. It's don't, you, don't you, don't, know. you don't know the person yeah. like but then, yeah yeah but then the other side of the line which is where some people get in the shit for absolutely no reason whatsoever to your point mm. is Asking a lady if she fancies to, to go going out on a date, and mm. there are some parts of the female female side of the population, on the woke side, 
and the like, f- like pockets of femini- feminism mm. will say that that shouldn't be allowed. Well, how would you? How would I, you? I, how would you ever procreate? Exam- are, the human are, race would just die off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and there are examples of people getting the mm. shit because they asked a lady yeah. if she fancied going out for a date, and she felt. For example, oh, I was in an elevator mm. and I felt intimidated, or something yeah, like that. It's just yeah, so yeah. that's yeah. a minefield. It's a minefield. It's so it is difficult to navigate a lot of the time. Yeah, you know. I mean, mm. in in at the very least, you know, it's like just think about the context of the situation. Just just don't be a dick. Try not to be a dick. You know, that's mm. it. And hope that the other person doesn't receive it in a dick-like way for a bit of virtue signaling, because yeah. that happens as well sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know. Prime example, that 83-year-old who's just been binned from, from <laughs> Buckingham Palace. I'd yeah, say yeah. that I say that probably most of the reason that she's been binned from that palace is because the accusations that have come get slung at her from that human rights, com- human rights yeah, campaign. Yeah, yeah. 90, 99.9% of the motivation behind her doing that is mm. for virtue signaling yeah. and attention. But then people, the argue, people argue it's impact, not intent. So what you could say to one person, on. you might mean well, but if they take it badly, then the burden of responsibility is on you. Because it's the impact of what you say, not your intent. Because you can always say, oh, I admit it's a joke, man. You know, and you could be yeah. really offensive and just fall back on, I admit it's a joke, you know. Well, I've, I've yeah. had that situation. I won't describe it again. But I've mm. had that situation. I'll tell you after the podcast. I've had that, I've done that, I've had that yeah. situation yeah. where I've said something and I was, I've been drinking, so I wasn't yeah, calm yeah. as minutes anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said something which I was like, lol, but it yeah. was fucking highly offensive, like yeah. highly offensive. And even in the sort of days after, I was like, what the fuck? There's nothing wrong with that. I was just having, I was just, I was just having a laugh. Yeah, yeah. But as, to be honest, as I've had, as I've had conversations on the podcast and gone on and thought mm. more about it, I thought, oh my God, because I, there is a possibility that I made that person feel like shit. Now yeah, I yeah. spoke to them after to go, look, I was, you know, just a yeah, joke, yeah, no drama. Yeah, and, yeah. and he was like, yeah, no, no, no worries. Yeah, yeah. But, was he just saying that to placate me? Yeah. Did I make him feel like shit? Did he grow? Um, did he? Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. Did he grow up have to deal with shit yeah. because of this certain mm. thing about him that I yeah. chose to do a fucking joke about yeah. at his expense, um, which I thought was fine, which actually isn't fine because the risk is there that mm. I made him. I feel like shit about it now because I, yeah. I this potential I made him feel fucking miserable and he mm. covered that up. Maybe, you maybe, know. maybe, maybe, you know. But then, does he does he have the em- does he have enough empathy to think that you didn't mean what you said? Therefore, possibly, possibly not. Mm. Because if the problem was, I was I was behaving in a way that was that was, that was and probably is acceptable. No, not behaving. I was communicating in a way mm. that jokey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Banter. It was Easy, banter, yeah, banter, yeah. right? Mm. In a way that was acceptable probably is acceptable yeah, yeah. still now in, in certain circumstances and contexts between certain groups of friends yeah right in mm-hmm. the military yeah yeah i was doing it yeah. in a civilian setting yeah and oh, i didn't right, know okay. the guy yeah didn't know well, the there, guy there you go you've got to know your audience yeah exactly mate terrible i'm well no mm. but but my so what so now mm. like that what that has done for me is now i he, he seemed fine but i i don't like the fact i've made of, i've may have made yeah. him seem fucking yeah, miserable yeah, yeah. i also don't like the fact that other people made judgments about me because of it, yeah, right, yeah. which is which is yeah, wrong. So that's right? another thing. Kind of but so now. so where what my control measure is now is mm. similar to the wolf whistling car horn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't do yeah. it. But what I, my control measure now is no, you, you don't. You do not joke about that kind of stuff. It's not worth the risk of mm. offending someone at minimum. Yeah. And at worst, ending up severely in the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you just don't do it. It's just not yeah. worth the risk. Why? Why risk really hurting someone's feelings mm. for something that is? Because you don't know. Has, yeah, that yeah, has yeah. been historically. That is a valid. Mm. It's a valid, like topic that yeah. should that you need to be careful with. You know. Well, I've, I've kind of had it on the receiving end as well. I mean, I had one situation. There's only one time where I really felt offended and and not said anything because I know the intent was all right. You yeah. know, and it was just one guy. In, I think it was. I think it might have even been SFSG or something. Moving boxes into a room or sort of for the accommodation. I don't, I don't know what we're doing. And um, and I held the door open for one of the blokes coming in, and I had me shorts on, prosthesis and everything. And the guy came in and the boxes, and he sort of said, "Ah, oh, you know, even a, even a cripple's holding the door open for me, or something like that." But it was just, a, and it was just a passing comment or anything like that. And I was just, I was, and then it suddenly hit me, yeah, I'm a cripple. Fuck. You know, and it just felt really bad. Perfect example. And I felt, yeah. and it, it made me feel like shit. 
And it was a reality check as well. You know, like calling a fat person fat. You're like, oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, maybe I am that as well. But like, you know, but that was really offensive. But at the same time, I totally know he didn't mean anything by it. And, he was, and it was just passing conversation. But that did make me feel really fucking bad. Well, this is the thing with like, yeah, this is the thing, this is the thing with any mm. conversation. But that's the thing about the interest in the military side. I mean, if you look at the icebreaker just now, which, mm. which I described as a car crash, it was yeah. only a car crash because you and me are slagging each other off all the way through that. Mm. Said well, some, you were slagging me off. I was I slagging was you off. I said some not nice things. Mm. But I know I can say that to you. Like, and, mm. and you know I don't mean it. And that's, what, that's how we have communicated forever. For years. Yeah. And that is how a lot of the military, especially in like the teeth arms, communicate. Well, well that, like the thing is, that I think what happens and, and, is... And, sorry, and anything... It, and no topic is safe. Anything about yeah, you... Yeah, nothing's off limits. Anything about you, mm. regardless about where you come from, what your yeah. history is, what you do, what mm. you've done, anything, nothing is off limits. Yeah. If, you know, as long as I know you and we get on, I'm going to fucking destroy you. Yeah. but yeah. I, And I think <laughs> the default, it's difference in, in the military, I think, especially in the Panthery Regiment, probably in infantry regiments as well, all over... And the armed forces in general, I think, a lot of the time. And services, to fire, uh, fire, fire probably, service. probably. But my experience, where I'm from, the default setting is savage piss taking. Yeah. Like you deconstruct a negative situation by savagely taking the piss out of it. Like that's how you deal with stuff. You just take the piss. That's how we cope. Savage piss taking, and that is the default setting. So, whereas as a civilian, you don't know what the other person's thinking, what you could say, they could misconstrue and everything. So you're initially polite until you get to know them better. Then you sort of ease in the banter, maybe if you can, and, and, and you know. But like you say, you don't do and even wolf whistle anyway. It's just uh, it's, wolf it's, whistling, it's, it's, backwards because it's, right? it's old fashioned more than anything no, no. else. Like, but yeah, you wouldn't do, you know, you wouldn't speak like that if you didn't know anyone and stuff. You know, again, know your audience, but. His default setting in the armed forces is just savage piss take. And it's it's, just, it is definitely the same in blue light services. It is definitely the same. Yeah, they, they've they got to develop a dark sense of humour as well, I suppose. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I think it's not developing a dark sense of humour. Well, it, but I don't think it's, it, it's, it's almost that your life experiences generally are a level darker, a level mm. darker. So everything else comes down a notch, mm. you know, come, has to come down a notch to cope with the level of darkness you sometimes experience or hard or hardship darkness yeah. or hardship mm. especially with death involved or risk of death involved mm. you know anyway yeah what what controversial topic have we not covered that we wanted to cover we didn't we weren't supposed to talk about any of this uh i don't know what's, well, we, what's your agenda you ain't got one have you you just gotta, fucking politics just roll with it. wolf whistling racism sexism racism yeah any more isms communism Communism did that. We have yeah. other isms. Feminism, oh, we mentioned it. Yeah. You only need to mention feminism to kick off. Yeah. Oh, they was a bit offensive. They it? was, yeah, oh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. They're getting angry in the kitchen right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Yeah. Oh, God. Is this, uh, hang on, is this, uh, are we being sexist? I don't know. Are you assuming that women would be offended by we, a feminist the, joke? Uh, because if they're women, they could identify as something else uh, do you know and then not get offended mm. by. I don't know, it's we are completely innit? undoing here everything we just talked about and yeah. the, the, the pedals that we put ourselves mm. on by now we're taking the piss out of it all. Well, yeah, but then as I've gone, as I've gone, you know, we, savage the default mode is to take the piss out of everything equally, everything equally piss taked. Yeah, and then it's fair. Yeah, that's it. Keep showing your toes. Taken. Huh? Keep showing your toes. Keep showing your toes. Keep showing your toes by um by 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 no stone. Be, no, by no topic being safe, like you keep showing, you you gotta be on top of your game to minimise. What are you what, on about toes? It keeps on keeps you on top of things on it on your toes. You know, keeps you on your toes. Yeah, I thought you said keep showing your toes. No, like, is that some sort toes. of weird Welsh saying or something? No, keep you on your toes. You know, gotta keep toes. showing your toes. No, keep showing your, keep showing your <laughs> toes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anything anything else? Um, no, I don't know. I'm just shooting the shit. We get some food. Yeah. Do you like the studio? It's not. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Very professional. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Obviously, you're a patron, and I wanted to mention it to you. I wanted. No, to you wanted to mention I patrons. Wanted to, I, I you wanted want to mention the patron yeah, thing. I wanted to make people aware of what what 
the HR patrons are doing, have done recently. Now, you're not aware, Stu, because you're in the Discord server, but you're not paying attention. <laughs> but you don't right? pay attention yeah, to it. Right. Right. So there's a secret in the, in the HR Discord server. Mm. You'll find a link on the website, right? I'm on it. I know you're on it. I'm mm. talking, to, oh, I'm talking okay. to my people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the this conversation, the shit in there, there's a secret area anyway. You like this, Stu. So one of the things they did last month is, um, so obviously the patrons pay pay basically monthly they volunteer you know they pay voluntarily pay money every month mm. four five six seven quid whatever they can bear well it's up to them what they choose and they get access to secret areas secret interviews blah 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 blah, blah and they get to engage and network with each other mm. so that basically puts money into the podcast right one of the things we did last month was i said let's nominate people to receive what is in inverted commas a random act of kindness, not mm. so random, right? So three <coughs> people got nominated last month by patrons. So they, mm. they basically had a think and gone, do I know anyone who could use a bit of a pick-me-up, who could use a bit of sunshine in their life, maybe having a hard time X, y, for X, Y, or Z reason? And so three people have been chosen and mm-hmm. voted on, so they've all submitted, and three people in the next well one's going to receive something this weekend the other two will uh, receive something <coughs> this month as in mm. December and they're going to be basically sent a, a gift which has also been suggested by the patrons and the gift it'll go to them out of the fucking blue out of the blue they'll get uh, something in the post no explanation no exp- no, there will be an explanation it'll, it'll mm. be a note inside saying something like um, you were nominated by the HR patrons to uh, we, we you you know what you're doing or situation you're in is appreciated and please just take this as yeah. a as um as a, a thank you or a good luck or a fucking mm-hmm. whatever. Three people, mate. How the fucking blue. How cool is that? Like no, ge- cool. like genuinely mm. I love the idea. Do you get like a short list and then you vote on them? Or Well, that was the plan. That was yeah. the plan. But then so last month when we when we first did it, I'll show you in the in the group yeah, after. Yeah. Yeah. Last month when we did it, so three people got submitted and the intent was right, we'll so they got nominated and, it's, and it's, it, we're using pseudonyms. Mm. So people have nominated them, not put their real names in, but given the uh, outline of the circumstance, mm-hmm. right? So you don't want to, you don't want to name people in there, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And then the idea was, okay, right, we'll vote on which one of these should receive something next month. Right. But, well, I didn't want to let two of them not receive anything. So we've gone, right, we'll just fucking do all three. Just do all three. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, you two, you didn't you get didn't get to get it. I mean, they don't they don't know they've been nominated. So these people, yeah. they don't they aren't aware yet. They aren't aware of anything. Yeah. So yet. the other two, they wouldn't they wouldn't they wouldn't they, know they were nominated. They wouldn't anyway. know. They don't know so they're nominated. They, they don't know they're nominated. They don't know. Yeah, but because because the three people are nominated, basically they they are having a shit time in their lives. Yeah. These three people. And I don't want to go into any details. Okay, three yeah, completely yeah, separate yeah, people, yeah, yeah. three patrons, individually mm. nominated these three people, and they've gone, here's why, I, yeah, this yeah. is this person, this is this circumstance, and this is mm. and, and, and this is why I think they should receive something. And so you look at all three of these nominations, you go, fucking hell, let's just sort them all out. Yeah. Sort them all out. Honestly, because you feel so, <laughs> yeah. you feel so bad. So yeah, that's fucking cool, mate. Mm. That's cool. Because like, I like, the podcast does something, I think, People get information from this. They learn. They get entertainment. Yeah. Not so much learning today, mind. They get entertainment from it. I think they've unlearned things today. Yeah, unlearned things. Entertainment. Yeah. Maybe a bit of inspiration every so often. Not, not this one, mind. Not this one, no, no. Um, and this is like another way to help the podcast give back. Yeah. I fucking love it. Yeah, it's like a big circle. Yes. Of, so, of pos- and, you pos- were an, and you were a patron, so you were an able of that. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, because... Yeah. Oh, because your subscription that yeah. that subscription is what's paying for this you know people's money going in mm. is going sorting these gifts out yeah and then the other patrons oh hey patrons thank you yeah thank you Stu Hale look at this camera say something inspirational uh oh god <laughs> I don't know what to say uh carpe diem oh, fuck off Stu what Go away. Say something unique, inspirational. Unique. Carpe diem. I don't know. Go on. People have got an energy crisis right now. Got money problems. Christmas mm. coming up. Maybe they can't afford to. Maybe they, they're worrying about presents for everyone. Maybe they can't afford to buy the next fucking meal. Maybe they, they, their paycheck is already gone. They got dramas. They're in hardship. What is your inspirational advice? Uh, look after each other. 
I don't, I don't know. You Jerry know. Springer. Like, <laughs> that's where I've heard it from, yeah. Take care of yourself and, and each, each other. other. <laughs> there you go. Bye, everybody. Bye. Ta-da. That's it. Thank you for watching the H-Hour podcast. If you're enjoying the podcast and you haven't already done so, please subscribe here around about there. I'm hoping it's around about there where the button's going to appear if not, if it's not already appeared. Uh, you can also, um, if you want to listen to the podcast on your commute, for example, when you're driving, when it's not practical to watch the podcast, you can listen to it. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Google Podcasts. It's everywhere. It's on all of the, uh, all of the common and not so common podcast apps. You can also, if you wish to do it, become a patron of H-Hour. Becoming a patron of H-Hour, you get access to all of the interviews before anyone else. So this interview with this guest was released days, if not weeks, before it was on release to the general public. And you also get access to uh, exclusive interviews, which I do with each guest, that last about 5-10 minutes, that are based on questions that the patrons themselves of H-Hour have chosen. And each guest, this one included, gets asked those questions before the main podcast that's getting recorded. It's like a pre-podcast interview, lasts about 10 minutes. And those interviews are really insightful, really enjoyable, nice and short, and they only release to patrons. They never, they never get released to the public. I don't know why I had a little stutter there. Um, you also get access to... A Discord community, exclusive Discord community only for patrons. You also get invited to a monthly Zoom call with myself and all the other patrons. And very often, most months, we have a previous podcast guest comes onto that Zoom call and has an exclusive Q&A with the patrons. In addition to this, there's monthly giveaways. We give away, give away gifts to my patron supporters. And it's all like, well, predominantly veteran-owned stuff. I'll go and buy veteran-owned apparel, veteran-owned product services, and I'll give them away to my patron supporters. And I'll also uh, do exclusive invites for events. So you'll get freebie tickets to events. To become a patron of H-Hour, go to patreon.com forward slash HK Podcast. I'm spelling Patreon, P A T R E O N. Patreon.com forward slash HK Podcasts. Hit become a patron. And uh, I'll see you on the next Zoom, Q- Zoom QA if you do. Oh, you also get your name in the credits. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.